Turn with me in the scriptures to Romans, the fourth chapter. We've prayed. You're believing with me, right? Yes. A man or a woman cannot produce what we're looking for, what we want, what we need and desire. But God can, and He uses people. And our eyes are on Him. This is Greater Faith Conference. Reckon what you might hear about <laughs> at the Greater Faith Conference. Well, faith. Is there more to learn about faith? Yes. Oh my. Is faith big to God? Yes. Oh yes it is. Uh, if you would just put, hold your place where you are, put on the screen 2 Thessalonians 1 3. 2 Thessalonians 1 3. We've got these words on the front of the church at Branson. He said, uh, I'm bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because your faith groweth exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all toward each other abounds. Those phrases, exceeding faith and abounding love. This should describe our life. That our faith is just growing and growing and growing until it exceeds everything we had thought it would reach. So after a period of time, especially years and decades, we ought to be experiencing things that God brought to us through our faith that decades ago we wouldn't dare imagine. Amen. And have we arrived? No, sir. Not quite. <laughs> so can our faith grow even more so? Yes. Somebody say, say it out loud. My faith, My faith is growing. Is growing. Exceedingly. Exceedingly. Now, it won't grow automatically. And you don't just grow by osmosis, by being around faith. It's amazing how much faith you can be around and not get it. <laughs> faith doesn't transfer automatically to the next generation. From parent to child. You wish it did, but just because you're around faith and around great faith people doesn't mean your faith will grow. It can. There's an opportunity, but it's not automatic. But just you being here tells me something. Right? Everybody in Branson, everybody join online, just you being hooked right now because otherwise you'd be doing something else or you wouldn't be here. But you care about this. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. You care about what God cares about. Yes, and you will not leave here as you arrived. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, don't, don't miss an opportunity to say amen on that. You, you, your faith. I'm not, I'm not just saying by encouragement. I believe I'm speaking by the Spirit right now. Your faith will be quickened. Thank you. Your faith will be enlarged Thank you. and increased yes. in these next days. Amen. Yes. Yes. And you will leave stronger with stronger persuasion and greater faith and an increasing vision of the goodness of God. Somebody say, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. It will be so, will be so. with me. With me. <laughs> that was worth you coming to church right there, right now. We're, we're already somewhere. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm. God is so good. He is so amazingly, wonderfully, graciously good. And we're just beginning to find out. Go to Romans, are you already there? Romans 4, verse 17. You have any verses marked along in here? Romans 4, 
17, Abraham was called, God called him. He said, I have made you. He said this when it, he wasn't experiencing it yet. I have made you a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickens the dead and God who calls those things which be not as though they were. One of the greatest lessons of faith is to not walk by sight. Every day when you get up, everything in this realm pulls you to what you see, what you feel, what you perceive with your senses. But if you walk by that and make your decisions by that, you're not walking by faith. Faith is unmoved by what it sees. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. Faith is unaffected by what it feels. Amen. That's big boy Christianity. Yeah. Is that right? Unmoved by what you see? Unaffected by what you feel? That's how God functions. God will say something. He'll decree something through a prophet, by an angel. And it won't look that way for millennia. <laughs> it will go the other way for millennia. You think God's upset about it? You no. think he's wringing his hands? No. Hoping it'll all work out somehow? No. No. He is unmoved yes. by what he sees. Because he said it. <laughs> he is unaffected by how you feel or nine billion people might feel. He is unaffected. Doesn't change what he said. And what he said shall come to pass. Heaven and earth will pass away, but it shall come to pass. And we got to learn that just because a few days go by or a few months or five years. <laughs> See, why'd you laugh about five years? <laughs> it didn't change what God said in his word. It didn't change what he told us by his spirit. Somebody said out loud, I walk by faith, not by sight. I am unmoved. By what, I see, by what I see, unaffected, unaffected. By, what I feel. by what I feel. Now that's a big statement, which is why you need to say it by faith. Yes. Yes. Keep reading. He calls those things that be not as though they were. Verse 18, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. How many agree? One of the biggest parts of this thing being successful is that he was unmoved by what he saw, how old he was, how old Sarai was. He was unaffected by how old he felt or what he saw or didn't feel. Verse 19, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. He was unmoved, unaffected. When he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he was unmoved, un unaffected by what's right in front of his eyes, Amen. by what he is seeing and hearing and feeling every day and night. This is impressive. Yes, it is. Right? Yes, it is. And to go month after month and year after year and still be unmoved by what you're seeing and unaffected by what you're feeling. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he, God, had promised, he, God, was able also to perform. Back up to verse 20. This is our text. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, 
giving glory to God. Say it out loud. Strong in faith, giving glory to God. Say it again. Strong in faith, giving glory to God. One more time. Strong in faith, giving glory to God. <laughs> I see this. I see things in this verse I, I've not seen before. What does faith have to do with glory? Strong in faith, giving glory to God. Some people have just read that as well. He was strong in faith, so praise God. <laughs> uh-uh. No. His being strong in faith is giving glory okay. to God. Okay. My, my, my. Being strong in faith gave glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In fact, they are inseparable. The faith of God and the honor and glory of God are tied together. They're interwoven. Go to 1 Peter 1, if you would, please. 1 Peter 1, and notice this. 1 Peter 1 and verse 7. He said that the trial of your faith, will your faith be tried? It will. And what's, what's your response if you want to be victorious? Unmoved by what I see. Unaffected by what I feel. The trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes. That's so much your faith is precious. Now, here's a revelation. Faith is very rare and precious in the earth. You do not find it everywhere. The scripture also said, not all men have faith. And the scripture said, when the master comes, when he returns, shall he find faith in the earth? More than once he asked people when he ministered, where is your faith? unbelieving, perverse generation. How long will I put up with you? Why? He's not finding faith. And among word and faith circles, there is this erroneous notion that we all got pretty good faith. That's not really the problem. We don't know what the problem is. <laughs> but the problem is plain old Garden variety, <laughs> doubt, and unbelief. That is the problem. Everywhere you look. And when people say, I got a lot of faith, you know immediately. They probably don't. Because if they knew what faith was, they wouldn't be talking like that. And you know, people mix everything up. And when they say, I got a lot of faith, they mean, I have strong faith that God is real. Well, that has nothing to do with faith to be healed yes. or faith to get your bills paid. The devils believe in God and tremble and does them no good. Real faith is a rare thing in the earth when you're talking about all the billions on the planet. I mean, you've got billions that don't even believe in God at all. Real faith the eyes of the Lord are scanning the globe. He is searching to and fro. Come on, what's he looking for? Help, help me out. What's, what's he looking for? Those whose heart is perfect or wholehearted toward him. Well, it's with the heart that man believes. Though it be tried with fire that it might be found unto what? Your faith might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Um, the faith we develop in this life 
will shine like a star in the next. It will never wane. And those who have greater faith will shine brighter. Study 1 Corinthians 15 to learn more about that. Differ in, like the stars differ in glory. We in resurrection will differ in glory. And some will rule over this much and others will rule over ten times that much. The kingdom of God is not socialistic. It is not everybody gets an equal share. <laughs> Where'd that come from? <laughs> the faith of God. Everybody could have faith. Every believer starts out with a measure, but many do nothing with it, and they dry up and shrivel up. But those who do, those who feed their faith and use their faith and walk in faith and live in faith and overcome in faith, and it grows, if you could see in the Spirit, it's a light in a dark world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's precious to the Father. It pleases Him. It, he sees it and it pleases Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many are, are believing that he sees some light yes. from Sarasota tonight and, and Branson and wherever you are watching? But, huh? That he's, it's not all dark down here. And it's not just us, there are many like us. Keep reading. That it would be found to honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Keep reading, verse eight. Whom having not seen you love and whom though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and what? Glory. Now what are we talking about? He's talking about your faith. Verse seven, your faith that's being tried. He said, it's evidenced uh, even though you don't see him, you love him. And though you don't see him, see again, unmoved by what you see or don't see. Yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. When you're full of faith, you're going to be full of expectation of good. That's going to make you full of joy. That's going to make you strong to be an overcomer. And when you're full of faith and you're full of joy, you're going to be full of glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Joy unspeakable can't be uttered in articulate speech and full of glory. Say it out loud. Full of faith. Full of joy. Full of glory. The joy of the Lord is your strength. That strength is the power of God. That's also the glory of God. Jesus was raised from the dead by the power of God. Scripture said he was raised by the glory of God. Verse 9. Receiving the end of what? See, what's he talking about in this whole passage? Faith, 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 your faith. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. That's not just talking about the new birth. That's talking about the entire Inward man. How many of the psalmists talked about he restores my soul? Yes, yes. Just because you're born again doesn't mean you think right. No, it doesn't. Right? <laughs> Mind needs to be renewed. Soul needs to be developed. Hallelujah. Go with me if you would. Are you okay so far? Yes. Can we go to the next part here? Yes. Go to uh, John the fifth chapter. My, my, my. In order for, there, there was a word. I don't believe that was just me talking. In the beginning of the service, there was a word about your and my faith being quickened and enlarged. Yes. Yes. You haven't already forgot it, have you? No, sir. There was a word. 
we got to cooperate with him for that to happen. And we, we, we're already beginning that. In uh, John 5 and 41, actually this entire fifth chapter deals with the subject of faith and honor, among other things. But you'll find faith and honor and glory, which the same Greek word is sometimes translated honor, sometimes translated glory, some of the same words. It is referenced numerous times in this fifth chapter of John. And Jesus makes this statement. I received not honor from men. I received not honor from men. Verse 42. But I know you, that you have not the love of God in you, or you could, you could, that could be translated love for God. And he's talking to some of the most religious people of the day. He said, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. That is perhaps the greatest tragedy of the entire history of this globe, this planet. That he came and was not received. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you what? Believe. Believe. Which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that comes from God only. What does honor have to do with faith? More than we thought. How can you believe? Let me read this in Young's literal translation to you, beginning again with verse 41. This is Young's literal. It says, glory from man I do not receive. And he's talking about as he walked as a man, as he was a minister. But I have known you that the love of God you have not in yourselves. I've come in the name of my Father, and you do not receive me. If another may come in his own name, him you will receive. How are you able, you, to believe? Glory from one another receiving, and the glory that is from God alone you seek not. Just stay with verse 44. Pride prevents faith. Pride prevents believing. What did Jesus say? How are you able, you, <laughs> to believe? What, so what's the implied answer there? You're not. You're not able to believe. Why? Because you have no interest in the honor and glory of God. And you're interested in being acknowledged. Hmm? And praised and honored by men. The scripture tells us that God gives grace to the humble. Doesn't he? The proud he resists. Well, we don't even know faith exists except by grace. And if we've learned a couple of things about faith, it was by the grace of God. If we're going to go further in faith, it'll be by grace, through faith, right? By grace is God's part. Faith is our part. And by grace, he reveals to us. Ha. Huh. 
don't know where to talk in tongues or how to say it. Uh, we've been on a series in the church for the last few weeks uh, called God's Incorruptible Word Seed. And we've been on what's called the parable of the sower, where Jesus taught about the sower sows the word. In the wayside ground, stony ground, thorny ground, good ground. And something that stood out to me that I had not noticed as much before is the scripture said he kept teaching and preaching to the crowds in parables, only in parables. And then the disciples would come and say, why do you talk to them in parables? And then they would say, would you explain that to us? And he would. And he said, to you it is given, but not to them. It's not given to them. And seeing, they'll see and won't see. And hearing, they'll hear and won't hear. And, and they won't understand. Didn't he say that? Yes. Why? And so I thought, why? And... You see, with the first type of ground, the wayside ground, they never even received it. They got no results. The scripture said it was trodden down. That, that word also carries the meaning of it was disdained. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and understanding and wisdom. If you don't respect, show God some respect and his word and his things, you will see and not see. You will hear and not hear. That's why he kept saying, to him that has ears, to hear. Let him hear. Well, what determines who has ears to hear? What determines who has ears to hear? John 7, 18, you don't, don't need to go there right now, but it, it talks about if any man will, will do his will or the literal is, is willing to do his will, he will know whether it's of God. A willing heart makes a hearing ear. An unwilling heart makes a spiritually deaf ear and blind eye. If you don't want to hear it, it'll be foolishness to you. If you don't respect it, you won't even see it. So, we're, let's see, where, where are you right now? Hold your place in John 5. Uh, in Romans, the first chapter. Let me say this before we go further. Is it okay with you if I take my, if I take my time? And yes. It's God's will that we come up to another place. It won't happen automatically. But we're already into how that happens. Romans 1, 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God and the salvation to who? Everyone. Not everybody. Not everybody. But everyone that believes. Okay. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. And verse 17, notice this. For therein, in the gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed and it's revealed progressively. How's it revealed? From faith. From faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, if faith is connected to honor, then this is also true. It's revealed from honor to honor. You don't have faith in what you don't respect. You don't have faith in what you don't honor. 
So the greater faith you have in it, in the message, in the word, the more reverence you have for it. And the more reverence you have for it, the more revelation you will get through it. Oh, hallelujah. Is that bear witness with you or not? Is that? Hallelujah. And so when people say, I didn't get a thing out of that. <laughs> if the word of God was preached and taught, all they're doing is telling off on their self. Their lack of reverence and respect. Abraham was strong. In, come on, say it out loud. Strong in faith. What else was he doing at the same time? Giving glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Strong in faith. Giving glory to God. Oh, it's already happening in our midst. It's happening all over the place. One of the uh, things that Brother Hagen, Kenneth e. Hagen, who's in heaven now, emphasized in what he referred to as the last phase of his ministry, he, uh, one of the things that came out, the Lord gave him an experience, a visitation before one of the camp meetings. and He actually took him in a couple of days into the future. And he saw one of the surfaces in the Civic Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and he was standing up above it. And he said the, the Lord was standing beside him. And they were looking down on the crowd, camp meeting crowd. This hasn't happened yet. How many understand the Lord is the Lord of time? This is amazing to me. He's got his hand on this. He's got his hand on that. And this at the same time. It's hard for your head to get around it. But they're seeing something as though it's present and it hadn't happened yet. And he said everybody was clapping. And he said the Lord turned and looked at him and said, clapping is neither praise nor worship. Really? Well, then what about let's give the Lord a praise? <laughs> you see how quiet it got? <laughs> Why bring that up? Uh, there's only one reference, to my knowledge, in the entire Bible that talks about clap your hands, all you people in the Psalms. Uh, and it's in connection with music, singing and playing and music. And it's fine to clap your hands with music. But he's talking about applause. We're told to lift up holy hands without wrath and doubting. There's a giant difference between this and this. Why am I talking about this? Does anybody know? Have I changed subjects? No, no, no. Why am I talking about this? It's, it's too much for me to come to Brother Mark and lift my hands to him. Huh? And say, I, I praise you, I worship you. That's too much for a man. Is that right? If that's too much for a man... This is not enough for God. And the reason I mention that is because from that time then for years after that, he'd refer to that at different times and he would make this statement. He'd say, you watch. When the people begin to show greater reverence for God, immediately you'll sense a stronger anointing. When you stop doing that, it's actually irritating when you 
identify it. <laughs> and you do this from the heart. You've entered into something higher. Is that right? Something stronger. Praise God. And if it's really, uh, we already sense it right now in the service. Is that right? I mean, uh, a stronger reverence and respect and honor. And you, you begin to sense more glory. His presence. And in his light and glory, we see light. And so from faith to faith, the revelation comes. It, the righteousness of God is revealed in the Word. Can you say amen? amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, be to God. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. You have to watch about trying to sanctify what the world uses. Hmm? Mm -hmm. The world uses that in, you know, uh, plays and concerts, concerts and political yeah. rallies, right? I mean, that's what men do for men, but they don't do this. And so there should be a, a distinct difference between the reverence we show men and the reverence we show God. And the reverence we show His Word and His Holy Spirit. There's a big move about being casual and comfortable. But you can be so casual that nothing's important. Right? Yes. And nothing significant. And, and it care. actually, we are experiencing a multiple generation harvest of disrespect that really was sown in the 50s and 60s. That nothing's important. You don't, you don't have to show respect, you know. Instead of yes, sir, it's Far out, man. You understand what I'm saying? It's everything is dumbed down and brought down to every, everything's the same, everything's equal, then nothing's a big deal. God is a big deal. Yes. Hmm? And you know, you should do your best. You think so or not? Yes. God's things should be important. Yes. Right? Yes. Now, you know, coat and tie, dressing up, that's Western. People don't do that all over the world. But it's not about a, a type. If you got two t-shirts and two pair of jeans, when it comes church time, wear your good ones. <laughs> Is that right? Wear your good ones. Wash them. Break out the iron. Come on. I mean, go all the way. Yes, sir. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. If you're going to play your guitar for the Lord, put on new strings. Is that right? Tune it up good. Right? Make a difference between the world and the things of God, between man and between God. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Said out loud, from, from faith to faith, from, faith to faith, from glory to glory. From glory to glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Go to Mark, if you would. The sixth chapter. Praise be to God. Jesus said, how can you believe? How are you able to believe 
that seek honor one of another and don't seek the honor and glory that comes from God alone. I'm, uh, I'm not done with that. Go to James, please. You said you're believing with me, right? Yes, sir. James chapter 4. I knew from 30 years ago plus that emphasis of my ministry was, one of the emphasis was faith. And I also knew the Lord kept dealing with me about humility. Humility, humility. But it took 25 plus years for me to realize they're connected. <laughs> Maybe you're quicker than I am, I don't know. <laughs> but I, I didn't think of humility and faith in the same thought. I do now. I see now they're, it's the same emphasis. In James 4, are you there? He said, uh, verse 6, James 4, 6, He, God, gives more grace. Wherefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. That's why Jesus said, to them it is not given. Now see, that, that, just, that doesn't sound like it agrees with what some people believe. But the Lord also said, don't cast your pearls before swine. Don't give that which is holy to the dogs. He's not calling people names. Pigs have zero appreciation for pearls. They don't know the difference between a pearl and a pebble. Yes. So if you, if you buy a super expensive string of pearls and give it to a pig and the pig trumps it in the mud and destroys them and, and you cry and you're upset, well, you're just dumb. <laughs> right? Because you should have known. That pig could care less. Yes. That's right. Well, many people don't have a care at all about the things of God. They just, they don't desire it. In the beginning days of, of the ministry, I thought the biggest problem was my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. I thought that's the biggest thing. If we can just let people know, then they'll get it and they'll be happy. And after some decades, I realize that ain't so. <laughs> it's not the whole verse. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And then I think, what, is there a semicolon? It's not even into the sentence. It's just because you have rejected knowledge. God is faithful. Anybody that wants to know him and wants to know the truth, he's making it available to them. He's giving them opportunity after opportunity. And if they want more, he's giving them as much as they'll receive. And if they want more, he'll give them more. But the sad truth is there are billions of people got no time for him. And even when they heard a truth of him, they don't want it. They don't want to hear anymore. They don't want to see anymore. And so they're stuck. And to them it is not given. Not because God's a respecter of persons, but because they chose not to respect him. His things are precious. They are more precious than gold and diamonds, and any amount of money. How many believe his things are precious? I mean, his words, the words of life, the revelation, his spirit, the gifts of his spirit, his people, his churches, his ministries, they are awesome. They are amazing. And only those 
who believe that and see that are qualified to be a part. It's being offered. Many are called. Right? Many are called. Why are few chosen? Few respond. He said, He gives more grace. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Is it true that God resists the proud? Yes. Is it true? Yes. It's true. Do you want to be resisted? No. Oh, my. But He does what? He gives grace to everybody. No. <laughs> that sounds, people like the sound of that, but. Huh? Who? Humble. To the humble. Now here's the thing. Read the next verse. I'm trying to get ahead of myself. Submit yourselves to God. Submit is a hated word <laughs> in our society. It is despised. It is hated. If you never submit to any people, you don't submit to God either. It's the fruit of it. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Now what you see is a taking of place under and giving a place over and then forcing the enemy to take a place under. <laughs> But which comes first? Yeah. Not the devil under your feet. Which comes first? You is the understood step. God's not going to make you do this. You willingly submit yourselves, therefore, to God. The only way you can honor God is to exhibit some humility. You can't give him a place above without taking a place under. Come on, can you see that? Yes. To honor Him, you got to, in your heart, you got to bow under Him and go, God, you are, you're awesome. I, I humble myself, and it can't just be words, under your mighty hand. In doing that, you're acknowledging your value of Him. By giving him the place over you, which is why the new birth is tied to confession of his lordship. Wow. Can you say amen? amen? Not just Jesus is the Savior. Yes. There are people in this state that believe God exists. They believe Jesus went to the cross. They even believe he's raised from the dead and they're lost. Because they have not submitted their life to his lordship. They have not received him as Lord. So the enemy still holds sway over them. What must you believe? You must believe that God has raised him from the dead. You must confess with your mouth. If he's Lord, you're not. Is that right? Mama's not. Come on, is that right? Your wife is not. Your husband's not. Come on, is, is he Lord? Then you have to humble yourself under that. You show a, a, a reverence. Now, one of the most dangerous and despicable things on the planet is religious tradition. I tell you, it's, it's something to be hated because it is a fabrication, an invention of men inspired by the devil to replace the honor of God. And it pretends to honor God 
while all it's doing is seeking the glory of man. It's evil. And Jesus said through the, excuse me, the Lord said through the prophet, these people, they honor me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. In vain, he said, they worship me. Teaching for doctrine the commandments of men, he said, you've made the word of God of no effect by your traditions. Somebody say, by the grace of God, not me, not me. By the grace of God, not me. And the difference you can tell is that stuff is phony. It is so phony. And it's people trying to act humble. And they're actually proud of how humble they imagine themselves to be. It's nauseating. But the real thing is so beautiful and so powerful. You humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. How many know something goes with that? Go to 1 Peter 5. Something goes with that. 1 Peter 5. Are you okay? 1 Peter 5. Verse 4, he said, when the chief, 1 Peter 5, 4, when the chief shepherd shall appear, you'll receive what? A crown of glory. It'll shine like a star. And what, what else? It never fades. <laughs> never have to replace any batteries. No. Never have to plug it in or recharge it never fades. Verse 5, likewise, likewise, he's talking about the same thing. You younger, do what? Submit, Submit yourselves to the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be what? Clothed with humility. Humility is an awareness of God's greatness. The reality of his greatness and of my complete dependence on him. That's not trying to be humble. It's living in reality. I had, uh, when I was uh, just a few years in the ministry working there at Brother Hagin's ministry in the healing school, the Lord was ministering to me some things about this, about humility and pride. And, and one of the first things I saw is how proud me and the men in my family <laughs> had been. My, uh, my great granddad was shot and killed when he was 21 because he wouldn't back down. Uh, my granddad was shot and killed when he was 21 because he wouldn't back down. My granddad on the other side of the family, uh, over a land dispute, he backed down seven or eight men with shotguns and all he had was a pocket knife. Wow. <laughs> Just the mercy of God, he wasn't number three granddad <laughs> dead. But I thought, that's how I was brought up. You don't back down. <laughs> and I thought that's just being a man. And boy, I'm beginning to see in the word at that time, that's ugly to God. The pride of man is the nature of the devil himself. I thought, oh, pride is the nature of the devil. Some people say, well, you know, you got good pride and you got bad pride. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, ain't no such thing as good pride. <laughs> well, I'm proud of my kids and I don't care what anybody. Listen, 
When the father spoke to the master, he didn't say, this is my son. I am so proud of him. I'm pleased. That's very different from proud. And uh, I saw what I saw, and this is grace. I saw I didn't know what pride was. I'd been in the ministry for a few years and I saw, I, I don't even know what this is. So that I don't know, I don't understand humility. I just had some religious junk idea about it. So I, I, I sought the Lord earnestly. I said, Lord, reveal it to me, show me. I wasn't prepared for what happened next. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not telling you to pray this way. I'm telling you what happened to me. I was ministering at the healing school there. We had classes in the morning, had classes in the afternoon. I'd been doing it for years. And uh, I did the music with the guitar or with the piano. The Lord had given me a bunch of songs. And I'd, I'd study and I'd pray, but I'd get up and I'd go in there and I'd do the songs. And I'd remember all the words and all the chords. And and I'd preach and I'd remember all the scriptures and be able to quote a bunch of them. And I'd been doing that for years. And I got up that morning and I got ready to go. And I thought, okay, how are we going to start? I couldn't think of one, one verse to go with another. I thought, come on, boy. You do this every day. Come on. I thought, well, you're going to start singing. So where will we start? And I couldn't think where to put my hands. I looked at the keyboard and I thought, you've been doing this for years. Come on, come on, come on. And I was unable to minister. For three days and nights, I was that way. And then it came back. And so what came back? Grace. I did not realize. I told him I wanted to know. <laughs> this, this was the exact prayer. I said, Lord, I want to know what's you and what's me. <laughs> like I said, I'm not, I'm not telling you to pray that. But my thought was, how can I fully appreciate and be thankful for what's him if I'm mixing it up? And I realized that being able to hear notes and remember them and remember chords and words was a grace I'd been born with. It wasn't me. It's something God put in me. Being able to stand up in front of people and not be scared and speak and even be relaxed and have scriptures just come to you and not just stand like a deer in the headlights and go, uh, 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 uh. I realized it is grace upon grace upon grace. And it is with you too. I said it is with you too. You may think I was born with that. Well, yeah. Who put it in you? Some things you're born with. You can even use it for evil. You can abuse a grace God give you, gave you. Some things you're born with. Other things are, can be added to you when you're born again. Other things can be added to you when you're filled with the Spirit. Other things can be added to you as you obey and finish successive stages of ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many would like to have some more grace? More grace. He said, more, James says, more grace. more grace. He gives more, more grace. grace. Well, we need to be thankful for what we have. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just exercise it right now. Lift a hand. Say, Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for my brightness of mind. Thank you for my strength, for my health. Thank you for every ability that you've put in us. 
And say this out loud. Say, I can, I can of my own self, my own self do, nothing. do nothing. Is that true or not? Yes. Is, is, that, is that being phony? Is that trying to be humble? No, that's true. That's true. And if I, I experienced it, if that grace is suspended from you, you can't find the door. You can't. You know, uh, Nebuchadnezzar got too big for his britches. You remember, you remember that? And the Lord warned him. He didn't listen. And he got up. He surveyed. He said, look at Babylon. Look at what I have done. Look at what I have built for my glory. And the word was spoken to him. It's departed from you. And he what didn't even have enough sanity to be a human being. They put him literally out to pasture. <laughs> he didn't even have enough understanding to be kept in the house. They kept him outside in the yard. He ate grass like an animal. Is that right? <laughs> Just that quick. Oh, friends, how many believe there is a God Yes. He is the creator of the heavens and the yes. earth. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Every good thing in our life yes. is a gift you. from him. You, Every ability we have that is worth anything, that is good, is a grace. Yes. Is a grace. And if you're good at something that everybody is not, if you find something easy that other people struggle with, don't get to thinking you're all that. Amen. You're graced. Grace. God has graced you. Yes. Right? Yes. You're blessed. Yes. Yes. Honor Him with these graces yes. Yes. and these gifts. Not a bunch of phony stuff, but genuine yes. thanks. Yes. Thank genuine, heartfelt yes. Yes. thanks. Thank what we're talking about is humility. Yes. That's humility. And with that comes greater grace. You remember, you, you never forget, even though the years pass and the decades, and no matter how much he uses you and how much is blessed, if you never forget, you know who it is. Yes. Yeah. Even though people try to brag on you, sometimes you can't correct everybody, but as soon as you get home, you put your nose in the carpet and you yeah. say, Lord, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. If it's good... It's you. If it was bad, it was me. Huh? And, and you're not playing games. You're not doing it for anybody else's benefit. Then what he will do is add to you. Add to you. More grace. Greater revelation is by his grace. Greater anointing is by his grace. Hallelujah. But it must be accompanied by greater reverence. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, Father. He said, all of you be subject one to another, 1 Peter 5, 5. Be clothed with humility. That means you put it on. For God resists the proud. And gives grace to the humble. That's two different witnesses, James and Peter. Humble yourselves. Who's going to make you do it? Nobody. If you don't do it, it won't be done. Humble yourselves, therefore, what? Do you get the picture? Under. Under. The only way we can give him the place above is to take the place under. Can you see it? Yes. You can't give him glory unless you're willing to humble yourself. Yeah. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he what? That he what? He that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Let's go back to this thought now. 
Jesus said to the most religious leaders of the day, how can you believe? How are you able to believe who seek honor and glory from one another? The fear of man brings a snare. I've had the privilege of being able to speak a number of times, privilege of being able to speak tonight. And you know, before, uh, before the meeting comes, I know we've got a lot of ministers here, and a lot of people coming in looking for answers. And I want to do a good job. And the moment that, cro that thought crosses my mind, I grab my ear. And I say, boy, you can't do this. You haven't got what they need. You can't produce what they need. Hmm? The idea of I don't want to look bad is the fear of man that brings a snare. The thing of I want to wow I want to impress is devilish. Are y'all with me, friends? It gets in the way. If we want it to be good, we want grace. Who gets the grace? What if there's pride going on? Not only do we not get the grace, we get resisted. You ever been in a resisted service? Oh, it's bad. <laughs> oh, oh, it's bad. It's dull. It's dead. It's slow. And everybody feels like this is not going well. <laughs> but, but doesn't want to say anything or just be nice and look ahead. And <laughs> I just don't know if I can do it or not. Let me help you out. You can't. <laughs> just, just acknowledge it. Right? Yeah. You can't. Right. Right. You can't give the people what they need. That's right. Right. Yeah. I just want to blow them away with new revelation. You're about to have one of them dead services. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about. <laughs> Ministers. Singers. Players, the more people's eyes are on you, the less anointed you will be. You don't want people bragging on you. It'll hurt you. You don't want people making a big deal out of you. You know what's a great service? The glory is so strong. The presence of God is so strong. People leave and go, who is ministering? They go, I don't know. But God was everywhere. <laughs> That's a service. That's a service. And whether it was you or me or a dozen of us at the same time, that's what we want. That's what we're hungry for. Right? And that mind-blowing revelation that healing and delivering anointing and power that just knocks cancer out of bodies and grows limbs and opens eyes is not the fruit of somebody really trying hard and doing it. It's faith, but that faith is inseparable from His glory and His honor. The more we honor His Spirit, the more the Spirit manifests. The more we honor His Word, the more we see out of it. Not me honoring you, not you honoring me. Us honoring the Word. Us honoring the Spirit. Can you say amen? amen. And we don't just wait till we get to service. We do that at the hotel room. We do that at the house. Is that right? We do, we do that in the car. Right? Said out loud, I love his word. I love your spirit, Lord. I love your people. 
I love your things, I love your things. And, I and I reverence you. Oh, just, just lift your hands. Let's practice it just a little bit. Lift your hands. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. Tell him how much you appreciate every gift in your life, every grace, every opportunity. Lord, we worship you. Go ahead and stand if you would. Stand.